Good evening, everyone. Yeah, I put on some red because our logo is so small, and I thought, uh, you know, I have to see it. it's rally red. So I have 10 minutes, and I'll just get down to what it's all about. Let me change hand. So I, I said I was going to get you out of the dark, <coughs> but I'm going to keep you in there, because I only have 10 minutes, and I didn't know that when I game, came up with the title. But um, <coughs> to get back to research, this is something that is uh, rather old, but still relevant. 95% of people in an organization do not know what their company strategy is about. So if you can imagine that the people who are closest to the customer do not know what the strategy of the company is about, how can they be doing the right thing and walking in the, in the right direction? And, and, and how can they feel part of that company? It's all about connecting strategy and execution and making sure that people that are part of the company that are doing the execution know what that strategy is about because you want them to build the right things. <coughs> Back to some research. This is probably uh, a slide many of you have seen and otherwise if you step into the agile world it will be one that will be put in front of your nose the whole time. Over 50% of our time we're wasting building the wrong thing. So if you look at the IT department, building software, building features, asking for features, building and working on requirements, asking in advance what, uh, what the customer wants, wanting to know everything up front, makes that we build features that are not relevant. So just a short math, if you have 10 people working on a project, it would mean that five of them are wasting their time. If you have big projects, you can do the math and, and, and calculate how much that costs. So what can we do to change this? How can we connect execution to strategy and strategy to execution? Nothing. No. No, 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 that's mine. It's a joke. <laughs> So Forrester wrote a nice article on uh, connecting the dots between strategy and execution. And then you still don't know how, but there is one really easy way of doing it, or at least what might not, no, it's not easy, but it's very effective. And that is bringing in a program layer. So if you have team level Scrum, so Scrum is the iterative method of, of, of agile uh, way of working. Often companies starting with it that even if they have multiple teams, are working at a team level, <coughs> then still you're not connected to your portfolio, to your strategy. But if you bring in a portfolio level, uh, sorry, if you bring in a program level, you can connect the dots between strategy and execution. Well, this looks like a nice slide, eh? because if you have the if you, if you use the terminology that you see in Agile, you think in investment <coughs> themes eh, in your portfolio, you break it down to initiatives, can be strategic initiatives. You break it down to features. So what are we working on? Something like as big as like three months or six months. Features and break them down to stories. Storytelling, what are you building? <coughs> and tasks at team level. Stories and tasks at team level. That program level that's where the glue sits. And there's a magic in doing it. So how, what do you do in that program level that makes the difference? <coughs> I call it the magic in connecting the dots. It's big room planning. Has anyone ever heard of big room planning? I knew it, and that's why I was going to tell you about it. This is big room planning. Say you have a, a project if, uh, if, uh, or, or a big program launching an uh, e-commerce platform, for example, or doing innovations on an e-commerce platform, one of the examples. And you have about 100 or 150 people involved in that program. 
What you see in Scrum is that a product owner talks to the Scrum team and they make the plan together. Eh? So you have about 10 people involved building a, a project plan. You can also build a project or a program plan together. You can facilitate 150 people in one big room and make that they build a plan in two days. A plan to which they commit, to which they know each other, they find dependencies, and they know what they will be working on for the coming three months. Three months is one of the cycles that's, that you often see for big room planning. So this is a Fortune 500 insurance company. This is what two, days look, two, two of the days look like. So executives, that's where the strategy comes into the room, they share their vision, what they want, why, what, what do they see, what's happening in the market, and how, what would they like the teams to be building in order to respond to what's happening in the market. So they share their vision and context. It's actually, <coughs> they don't step back and, and develop plans separate from the teams, but they talk to them and they actually get the, the inter interaction on the spot. And teams, they break out. They interact first and then they break out into, session, into teams, teams they work in. So it's not that, that, it's, that it's a game that you sit with, just pair up with someone. Often it, it's, it's mapping the structure of the organization. And they start building a high level feature backlog. And they talk to one another. And it could be that an executive is thinking of, of, of one type of feature, but that during the conversation, they actually get the insight that it's better to build something else. So that is where your percentage drops, that you build the right things and not the wrong things, so you don't waste your time. But teams, they find each other, and there's this, it's really, really, um, uh, so the energy is high, and, and it's really amazing to be part of it, and if you ever get an opportunity, please visit one of the big room sessions, uh, PI planning sessions, because, um, People find each other, and it's not that a, a, a the, the, I call it the old-fashioned way of, of project management, where someone tells the other what they have to do. People just find each other, and they solve dependencies, and they build a plan together, a plan to which they will commit. But risks are also tackled, because management is in the room. You can, are you going to take the risk, or are you going to find a different way of, 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 of tackling it? But you do tackle risks up front. And then you form that joint commitment and the day after you start working on the plan. And so even <coughs> big companies that have uh, people all over the world, they even make the investment to fly people in every three months and do the planning together. Some extra pictures just to give the feeling of what happens. So this is a, a big uh, retailer. It, it are actually pictures of customers of ours where we facilitate these uh, sessions. Big satellite imaging uh, company. And um, so you see everything around the walls. Eh? What you see with Agile and Scrum is that everything, colors and, and everything against the wall, just interaction. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really, really high energy two days. Can even be very long days as well. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of preparation before you can actually go into the session. <coughs> big financial services company. <coughs> so everyone's doing it and the largest companies are doing it and Philips is doing it as well. Edgar will have 10 minutes to tell you about it. I have, I'm gonna show, get you out of the dark because there is a way of getting there and that's easier than you might think. Uh, we, have, we, have, we have some steps to uh, guide our customers in, 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 in going towards prepping for big room planning. Ready, sing, go. I'll just go through it really quickly. In the ready phase, we first start with educating leaders, because I think that's one of the most important parts to tackle. You need the mindset, you know, you know, want a management 3.0 way of, of working. Uh, it can be started from bottom up, but you definitely want top-down commitment. Then we design programs and roles. So what would a skilled agile environment look like? How do you form teams? Do you have component teams or feature teams? We configure our platform to make sure we have end-to-end -end visibility, but I won't talk about that uh, today. And we launch teams. So you have, if you have multiple Scrum teams, it could be 20 Scrum teams in one program, for example. How do you make sure they get into the same cadence? Two weeks. Two-week sprints are most effective, so we get 
customers into two-week sprints. <clears throat> and we invest some time in building a product backlog. This is prepping for the big room planning that will be followed, following up soon. But we also look three months ahead, six months ahead, and if possible, even nine months ahead, knowing that things might change in the meantime, but as you don't want your uh, architectural runway, you know, there are still things you need to take into account and, and strategies to follow. And we do a facilitated planning event. That's the big room planning, which you see left-hand corner. Um, do the two-day session. Yeah, it's actually just a two-day big room planning session. People step out of it and they start working for three months. And after three months, they come back, do the next session, and, and a little bit before they do inspect and adapt. Yeah, the learning, continuous improvement, Kaizen, the lean principles. That's it, actually. 